Welcome to this tech tip showing how to handle multiple setups in CAM software. This tech tip explains how edge CAM technology can be used to simplify secondary machining operations for CNC turning centers. The concept shown here can also be broadly applied to secondary milling setups. If a machining setup complete in a single spindle, single turret turning center, this machine has live tooling and the live tooling has been used to mill the hex on the part and the turning capability has been used to do the turning work itself. If we cut away half the part we can see that the inside detail including the counter bore has been done as well. We'll create a new setup to flip the part over and machine the second side. We'll begin with going to the setup tab. For the sake of clarity I'm going to turn off the display of the machine and we're going to use the create sequence command where we can create new milling, turning, or wire DM sequences. This is the second side turning op, so we'll choose a new turning sequence. Just as we would on the first sequence, we'll pick the machine tool, and then what's new here is the ability to use the component, stock, and fixtures from a previous sequence is the initial setup for this one. That's what we want to do. We want to reuse what's been done in the first sequence. Notice that it is possible to make a new sequence that's entirely disconnected from the previous if we wish. The second thing we're going to do is pick the initial CPL to use. Now I want to go back to EdgeCam before we complete that and look at a couple of things to note. We'll turn off the display of the chuck now. And notice that the first spindle zero uses this main spindle zero which is the same as the turn CPL, where Z positive is headed to our right, which would be typical of a normal horizontal turning center. EdgeCam has also created a CPL called back inverse turn, and this one points Z the other direction. If you imagine the part staying still and the world revolving around the part, the Z axis of the machine tool would now rotate to face the opposite way. EdgeCam has created the CPL for us automatically. If we didn't have a CPL of the location we desired, no problem. You could go and create a new CPL that sets up the zero point that you want to use for the second setup. This needs to be done before you create your new sequence. So now that we know which CPL we're going to use, we'll select the back inverse turn CPL as the CPL to use. We'll grip the part three quarters of an inch back on the shoulder and I want the chuck jaws to grip on a three and a half inch diameter and we'll call this turning operation two. When I click next, let's see what happens. Okay, the sequence is created. We can see that the Z axis direction has been reversed and we can see an outline of our stock. I'm gonna unrender the part and turn on the rendering of the stock to help visualize what we saw earlier in simulator. The Edge Cam software has correctly picked up the stock from the previous setup. Now another view trick that we can do is to help us understand how this relates to the machine. When I go to the view reference, I'm going to have the view be referenced to the machine coordinates rather than the world coordinate system. And this way, the turn view is normal to the setup that I'm in. So this helps me visualize exactly how this part's going to be located in the second setup. I agree with that. And I'm good with that and we're ready to resume with finding features and then after finding features to create tool path. One advantage of having multiple sequences in the same part is that we can take tool path from one sequence, copy it, and reuse it in another. Using standard Windows selection technique, we'll highlight the instructions to copy, the finish turning in this case. Click and hold down the left mouse button, drag to the desired position, and then hold the control key to let the software know we're intending to copy rather than move. When I let go of the mouse, the copy is created using this drag and drop technique with all of those commands that we requested. In this case, finish turning needs to be retargeted to new geometry. So I'll clear out the old picks, select the new geometry to target it to, and build tool path. This is much faster than building the tool path from scratch to simply reuse what we've already started with. Keep in mind that you may also have cases where it's preferable to use the copy command, which is located in the miscellaneous drop-down list, instructions, and copy. This command provides a more comprehensive dialog where you can call to edit modifiers, 
This forces the dialog box to come open so that you can change values and reassign geometry directly during the copy process so we can get everything done in a single action rather than copy with an edit later like we did here. Now that we have the toolpath we want, let's simulate the motion. Because there's multiple sequences, EdgeCam wants to know which one to simulate. By default, the active one is selected. That's great. We could add others if necessary and be able to simulate the process. To begin with, notice that the stock is accurately shown. We can accurately see the stock as machined from the previous setup and just pick up from here in the new setup and continue. As we begin the playback, I've slowed the motion down so that we can see how the tools come into play and we'll turn off the guards or enclosure of the machine for visibility reasons. The first tool comes up, faces the part, looks great. We can see that that faces off just down to where the existing through hole is. And then we're bringing in a round insert tool and using EdgeCam's efficient new waveform rough turning cycle to machine the groove area in this part. First of all, we see that this tool path is collision free. We can see it accurately works the stock that's remaining from the previous setup. And as we get deeper into the part, we can see that waveform rough turning is a great application for a part like this, where we can take a single turning tool and do a variety of geometry that would typically require two, three, or possibly more tools using traditional turning methods. When the boring bars come in, we can also make sure that the boring bars machine enough to remove the material of the ID, but not excessive. Again, making sure that both setups work together as a machining process. Finally, we finish turn the part and then the machining operation is complete.